Don't try this at home. <laughs> this is part two and today we're building this wood stove. Made mostly out of scrap materials. Okay, if you saw part one of our wood stove video, making a camp wood stove, then you know uh, where we're at. And if you haven't seen that, go back and watch it. Check it out. Uh, this is part two, and we're going to complete the wood stove today. Quick disclaimer, I'm not encouraging anyone to do this. I'm just showing you what I did to make a camp wood stove. This is experimental. These materials may not be what a person should actually be using for this. This stove was made for outdoor use only. Something like this should never be used in a building or an enclosed space of any kind. If you do try this, it's at your own risk. Wear gloves and any other safety equipment that you think you might need. This video is made for entertainment purposes only. This is just what I do and how I do it. Hope you enjoy the video. All right, just to bring you up to speed, we have completed uh, the main body of the stove. This is a steel roofing panel and uh, we form that into a square, made a front end cap. This is the front, we gotta make a door for that. This is the back end cap, the back of the stove. And we put a piece in here for our chimney pipe. And the chimney pipe, this is all scrap, except for this piece and the chimney pipe so far. And the piece that we're gonna use for a door. From here, we're just using three inch and uh, we'll put those all together to make our chimney and of course we size the stove correctly so that our pipe fits neatly inside when we shut the door. So what kind of door are we going to put on this wood stove? Well when I needed pipe for the chimney I went and bought the pipe for the chimney and I saw that they also had uh, end caps pre-made for uh, ductwork and I got one that looked very similar in size to our stove. The stove dimensions ended up being uh, something like 7 inch by 11 inch. Uh, there's some fractions in there. This is 8 by 12. So we'll have to do some cutting. And initial thoughts are to put it on with a hinge and hinge it open. However, I think the simplest method is going to be to cut it so that it just slides down and there will be some brackets on the side and just slide it in and slide it out in order to access the wood stove to reload. All right, well, the easiest way to do this is gonna be basically cut this side, cut this side, and this side, leaving this lip on top, and then we'll put a couple brackets on the side. I have some L brackets uh, left over from some other projects, and I use these for packaging material as well for some things that I crate up uh, but yeah, we'll put them on like this and uh, put them on the sides to help guide the front door and hold it uh, tight to the stove. Children are great. I love my children. Even whenever they sneak the setting of my drill onto hammer, 
Now I've drilled an extra hole in each one of my L brackets and I'm going to attach them to hold the door on. Right there we have it the uh, two L brackets are attached in the front I've tipped them ever so slightly to have more gap at the top than the bottom hopefully when I slide the door in the idea is uh, hopefully it'll uh, be easier to catch the bracket and guide it right into place but yeah the door just slides on and off just like that now I need to put a little handle here, something that I can grab onto that's not going to get hot. That way I can open it whenever I need to. All right, All right so we've decided that uh, probably the best thing to do is going to be to put a, a knob, just a, a probably a wood knob is what I'll use, make it out of something. We'll put that wood knob right in the middle here and in order to do that there's going to be a screw on the back of that knob and I don't want that screw to catch when I'm pushing uh, this door on or off the stove. So I need a little dent in the back so the screw is sitting in so it doesn't catch when I take the door on and off. So I'm gonna use a little pipe and I'm gonna put the uh, door against it, try to hit it with the hammer a little bit. So I want the dent in this side. So I'm thinking I'll probably line this up on the pipe and hit it with a hammer into that pipe. Looks like that shows up good on camera. There's a dimple on this side, an indent on this side. So the screw will sit down in there and it shouldn't interfere when I slide the door on and off. Gonna need a hole in there as well for the uh, screw to go through. And of course, drilling in metal, don't forget the safety glasses. So I need a knob for this little door. Where am I going to get one at? Well, if you're not aware of it, we make hiking sticks and sell them as well. So uh, I think what I'm going to do is I've got a piece of stock here that I already have. So. Uh, I guess that comes into the free category because it's a little long and we'll end up with a little cut off anyway. So I'm going to do a little cut off right here and uh, use that as my knob for the wood stove. Got the knob on the door, screw went right through there. I think that'll pass, it'll, uh, it'll miss whenever I put it on and off. That uh, I used a wood handle. Uh, some people might think, hey, the, maybe that wood will catch on fire. I don't think so, I don't think it's gonna get that hot, shouldn't. I want a wood handle because when I touch this, it's not gonna burn me. If I touch this, it's gonna burn me. So I can take this on and off with the wood handle without getting burned. My front that I made, I accidentally made these cuts here. And I think it's because of the corners that I put in to reinforce that. It's actually pushing out, which gives a sort of a, a tension when I put the door on and off. So I like that. That's actually worked out pretty well. Well, the stove is basically put together. At this point, there's all kinds, there's like galvanized finish and whatever, and uh, old paint on this and we need to burn all that stuff off. So at this point we're going to take the stove and the chimney outside and we're going to fire it up.
Hey, our books have arrived. Yeah. You want me to open it? Yeah, why don't we open it up and check it out? All right. Do like an unboxing. What are you doing? Yeah, I'm gonna open up the box. That's not a knife. It's our newest book, Adventures in Country Living and Sustainability, Book One, Our Homesteading Journey. All about living on the farm. It's all about our adventures in homesteading, how we got into homesteading, some of the adventures we had along the way. There's some advice in here, some tips and tricks. Some full color pictures in here as well. It's not a boring book at all. No, it's got a lot of pictures. But you can read the book too. <laughs> it's got words too, great ones. <laughs> this is our first book in this series. It covers how we moved to the countryside. We lived on a farm. We got into homesteading, had our own business, our trials and errors and different things that we did along the way, the ups and downs, the things we learned. Our second book we plan to release later this year, Our Handmade Home, all about how we build our own house with our own hands, with help from friends and family. Hey, our books are here. Yep. You know, I liked reading this book. I like writing it. I liked it because it was like a trip down memory lane, seeing all the things that we went through and how far we've come. It was a lot of fun putting it together, a lot of memories. Lots of good memories. Check it out, get your own copy, follow the links in the description below. it is a winter's day we're gonna fire up this stove didn't really think about it there's no legs on the stove yet so we do need to uh, set it on some blocks we got some paper here we're gonna fire it up give it its first run burn everything off Okay, we put all our chimney pipe on and it made it top heavy and with the wind blowing it wanted to just fall over. So we only have two pieces attached and the other two pieces are sitting on the top. But already we have a small fire and already uh, paint is burning off and we hope that this will uh, burn everything off of the stove real good and off of the uh, chimney pipes too. But it looks fairly promising. It's 
uh, burning off fairly well already, and we just started. All right, so in case you're wondering how much time is involved in making this thing, um, so far, going back and looking at footage that we have had so far in the actual build part of it, there is about two and a half hours involved. As far as cost goes, there is under $30 worth of stuff that had to be purchased for this. Most of this is scrap materials and things that I already had on hand. So there isn't a lot of investment. However, I did price out, if I built this completely with HVAC duct work and things at current prices that are available at a hardware store, etc., it would cost just as much as actually purchasing a wood-burning camp stove that is intentionally made by a factory. So if you have this material on hand, yes, you can do this and you can do it cheaply. If you're going to go out and buy HVAC material that's brand new or something like that and try to make one of these, you're going to spend the same amount of money and possibly even more if you don't have all the tools and things. So if you have the materials already or you don't care what it costs, then this is a fun project. But if you don't have the materials already, then just know that you're going to probably spend more than what it's worth to actually build this. Yeah, it's really weird. Most of the top of the stove from the uh, chimney out had turned black on uh, the white paint had turned black and now it's turned white again and scrapes off really easy. It's interesting. So we're trying to burn all this finish off of the stove and off of the chimney pipe. And uh, it's not burning off fast enough, so we're intentionally starting a chimney fire by putting our sticks in through the top. Don't try this at home. <laughs> Normally, you don't want to load the stove through the chimney. <laughs> As you can see, the paint is burning off. It's changing color. I didn't bother to put any kind of vent in the front. The door doesn't seal perfectly tight and uh, it's really unnecessary. So, yeah, if you need to let more air into the fire, you can always pull the door up part way, crack it a little bit, and that lets a lot more air in. So in case you're wondering why were we burning off the finish on the stovepipe, and on the stove itself. Uh, those finishes are not made for high heat and they would burn off anyways. As you saw uh, in the video, they were burning off and I would rather do that outside uh, now rather than attempting to do that later when I'm using the stove, like in a tent or something, because as that stuff burns off, it does emit like fumes and whatever, it's toxic. So I want to burn that stuff off now in a controlled way where it's outside and then paint it with a high heat paint that's made for those temperatures. All right, so it warmed up a little bit, so we're going to go ahead and try and put some paint on the stovepipe and on the stove itself. This is a high heat paint, good for up to 1200 degrees. This stove will never get that hot. Uh, they could get five, 600, so 
that's not out of range. So 1200, that's good. All right, we got the stove here. Most of the paint and everything burned off. Then we took a wire brush to it, tried to clean it up a little better, but yeah. It warped the top, I'll fix that after we paint it. I don't think it'll matter, I hope it doesn't. Uh, but yeah, there's a few other things need to do to it as well. Wood knob for the door, that actually caught on fire. Uh, it was smoldering a little bit. Um, we cranked this thing up, packed it full, and probably had it a lot hotter than what it'll be in normal use uh, because we were trying to burn off all the old paint. So that's probably why that happened. But uh, yeah, I'll probably do something a little different with the knob. Maybe I'll try another wood knob and just see how that goes. I don't know. All right, time for some paint. All right, one thing with the stove that happened I didn't like, we got it really hot, warped the top, and I'm gonna have to fix that. And to try and strengthen this a little bit, this, this thing's pretty loose, so I cut out a ring that I'm gonna reach up inside and uh, put that ring in there. Yeah, it's not a perfect circle, but it's gonna be inside. <laughs> and this is bigger than it needs to be, so yeah, we'll slip it up in and then we'll try to go through here with screws and hit those tabs and pick up that ring as well. And that should strengthen that this thing isn't loose and wiggly anymore. All right, it's another day and the last thing left to do is to put legs on the stove. And what I'm gonna use, I actually had one of these little uh, tarp buildings, like a 10 by 20 thing. And uh, the wind destroyed that a while back. And I have these pipes left over from that thing kind of like tent poles, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna use those for the legs on my stove. So I'm not gonna burn the paint off of these and I'm not gonna repaint them. And there's uh, three basic reasons why I'm not gonna do that. Number one, I'm not too sure uh, if this paint is really gonna burn off that much. Uh, I don't know. I'm gonna put some washers on the way that I attach these. They're gonna be held out from the stove a little bit. Uh, if they do, if the paint does burn off in future, I can always touch it up, repaint it, whatever. Second reason I'm not going to do that now, it's already taken two cans of spray paint to paint this stove and the stove pipe so far. And that has taken our overall cost up to $39. And I don't want to spend any more on this project. This is supposed to be scrap material and it is up until we get to the door and the stovepipe and i don't want to get any more pricier than that and the third reason that i'm not going to burn these off and paint them is because i have spent too many evenings <laughs> working on this project and i need to get it done and uh, we're actually doing two videos at the same time we're doing the stove build videos and there's another video that we're doing at the exact same time. And if you can identify what that video is, uh, put a mention in the comments of this video or the other video. So from here, I just need to get these cut and uh, mounted to the stove. All right, these legs are right around three feet long, so I need to cut them down. Uh, they have this like tapered end here that they fit up inside of each other. And what I would like to do is save that end and uh, use the cutoff to mount onto the stove to receive this end then. So anyway, I want these to fit inside the stove so I can store them inside with the stove pipe. So we need them to be no more than 24 inches long. I think I'm going to make them 23 and a half.
Okay, now we've cut these posts down and uh, we, we've cut them into three pieces. A little piece that's gonna go on the side of the stove and the longer piece and then a piece of scrap. But this is gonna go on the side of the stove and then this piece will fit up inside. And what we'll wanna do is we're gonna put two large holes in here so that I can reach through with a screw and go through the other side onto the side of the stove. I'm gonna put some washers uh, to hold it out a little bit and midway down to give it a slight angle so the legs aren't perfectly straight, they'll splay out just a little bit. All right, so the way I'm doing this, got a magnetic bit, put it through the hole, find the hole on the other side and just get it started. And I'm doing that top and bottom. And once they're started, I'll put them on onto the stove itself. I'm aligning the top with the top of the stove and I'm just going right up against the uh, front cap or back cap. Then once I have my holes in the side, I know where it's gonna go, I take it back off and I put the washers on. For the back one, I want four washers just to hold it out from the side a little bit. That way the legs splay out just a little. All right, well, if you like this video, please share it with your friends. And like and subscribe. And hit that notification bell if you'd like to receive notifications when we upload the next video. Thank you, see you on the next one. Tin snips, man, tin snips. Red or yellow? <laughs> Can you bring it over? Anyway, time for a brief intermission. Today's weather forecast. Sunny and a low of 39. Okay. And cold. Oh, there's a spider right there. Where, where's the tape measure? Where are my tools? Right there. Right there. They pop a look. I got a dead battery. A dead battery. Right there. I got a dead battery. A dead battery. Who's charging these batteries? Hey, where's my battery charger? This is a little camp wood stove that we're burning today. <laughs> This behind us is a little wood burning. This behind us is a little wood burning stove for camping and other act. Out. Oh. All right, it's another day, and you. You mean I didn't record any of that? I can't believe it.